Okay. I got the message, man. I got that message. Oh, what I wouldn't give. Well, what I mean is I'd like to have some of those Squaresville newspaper critics around here just to dig this. Huh? <laughs> Five years ago, they said I was dead. Do you remember? Dead, they said. The prince was dead. The prince turned into a pauper. <laughs> you know what they told me? They said that my arrangements, my arrangements were old hat and old fashioned. You, uh, you remember? Remember this one? You remember, Pete? First you say you will, and then you won't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This one went way out with me. Remember, I want a someday kind of love. My new recording. Selling over a million records today. And I have not changed my style. You wait till you hear my, my next record. It's called Life. Yeah, that's right. That's the title, Life. And it is life. I think it's the finest composition I've ever written. Uh, maybe the critics won't like it, but I kind of think maybe you cats will. That's all that counts to me. Because if you cats love me, man, the prince ain't dead. Yeah. The prince ain't dead yet, Johnny. I need you, man. Let's go. title for great peace huh. from the beaver song to this you amaze me mr prince i didn't think you could write like that <laughs> johnny boy this hand is art this is commerce commercialisticism johnny commercialisticism <laughs> commercialisticism john boy that's the front for all art everything's a front like this this fabulous apartment i got here six years i kept it six years i couldn't afford it right Fabulous rental, right? You like my suits, don't you, John Boy? Cool. It's all a front, John. Everything's a front just like, well, my million-dollar smile. No, today it's a record. You, you can't see on record. You can only hear. Maybe I put on the dog just to impress me, huh? Well, that don't matter. Look, John. I want to talk to you about something more important, like my habit of breathing. I lost the beat, Prince. You did, huh? It's a slow, easy blues tune, Johnny. There's four cats pretty close to me. They come around my house most all the time. The way I got it figured, one of them wants to murder me dead. You sure? Am I sure? Johnny, when I taste arsenic in my grapefruit, then I'm sure. I know one of those cats has done the sprinkling. You go to the cops? I'm gonna lay it out for you easy. I'm trying to make the public like me again. Why advertise that some of that public is trying to kill me? Yeah, you say you figure it was one of those four people. Listen, Johnny, when I'm working on new material, I coop myself right up here in this joint, no place else. I see my wife, Rosemary, my arranger, Jerry Lindstrom, that cute little girl singer, Ellen Roger, and my business manager, Malcolm Simpson. That's it. These four drop by every day? Mostly, sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes all of them, all four of them. But nobody else, you understand? Now, listen, you hear me good, kid. I want you to check on them and find out which one of those cats is trying to pull a Borgia act on me. Okay, hit. I'll work on it, Prince. Okay. Got some addresses here. There they are. They're all written down for you. Cause you can check on my ex-wife first, Rosemary. She's... She never goes to bed before dawn. She doesn't like to drink in the daytime. Thinks it makes the night last longer. All right, Lester. I was on my way to see Rosemary Lawrence, the legal wife of Lester Prince. 
She hadn't lived with the prince for several years, but her voice lived with me, and I guess it always would. My favorite canary, and this was a cage. What was it the prince said? Improvise? You're not the boy with the eyes. No, I'm afraid not. No. You like scotch warm? I right, cold nights. I got a fire. I got a chill. First your name, three references, then the invite. Johnny Staccato, one reference, Lester Prince, okay? Uh, anybody who's a friend of my husband's is an underprivileged child, and I'm the charitable type. Come on in. Close the door. How many fingers? Um, uh, no thanks. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm fresh out of marshmallows. We could have ourselves a ball. Don't I know you somewhere? Could be. I've been there. Doing what? I play a little piano. A little piano? Now, that's what I need. A guy who plays a little piano. All the guys I know play a big piano. Big and fast and loud. No vocal. No vocal. Just big, fast, loud noise. It's a noisy world. It always was. But was a day, my friend, was a day when the big bands played soft and easy. It was a day when a gal could sing a lullaby to this old noisy world. It was a day. Does that help? Against the noise, I mean? It's either this or wear earmuffs. Oh, don't worry. I'm a deceptive drunk. I don't slur. I don't weave. I don't stagger. And I am never profane, except when I'm alone. Or when I'm with the prince, which is like being alone. Was it always like being alone? I mean, 15 years, that's a lot of solitary. It wasn't always so bad. I met him at a radio station in Ohio. Big band, big name, big man. I just looked at him. He looked at me and he fell. I mean, hard. And you? Man, that look was my audition. I knew before I opened my mouth, I was the prince's ninth girl singer. And a year later, I was his first wife. Well, I figure, if you're gonna sign a contract, make it as tight as you can. You were gonna play him for all he was worth, huh? Him? No, me. I played me for all I was worth. And that wasn't the beginning, either. The beginning was my mother, who was the maid in the only hotel in town. And my father, who checked in for a month and then checked out forever. The beginning is I was a nobody. But I had a voice and a face. And when I got on that bus for Cleveland, I made up my mind to play for the moon. And if I was lucky, maybe I'd hit a star. I think I will join you for that drink. You're nice. I mean, you're quiet. How much do you hate the prince? How deep is the ocean, hot cha cha? Could you kill him? Are you buying or selling? Well, somebody slipped him a touch of arsenic. I just thought I'd ask. Arsenic? Well, now, would I kill the prince? I would like to. But I'd do it my own way. I'd sing the opening chorus of Frankie and Johnny, and then I'd shoot him through three times, right on the beat. I mean, I'd do it in my own style, if you know what I mean. Well, look, uh, it's tomorrow. I'd better cut out. Did you come over here just to ask me if I'd kill the prince? Yeah, that was it. Well, what did I say? You said, yeah, you would. And what do you think? I think, yeah, you would. Well, as long as we understand each other. When you go, go quietly. No noise.
next morning, I went looking for Ellen Roger. A rehearsal hall is simply an empty room where the neighbors don't complain. Jerry was rehearsing her. So here they were, numbers two and three in the list the prince had given me. To smile again until I smile at you. I can't make it this way. I've got to do it my way. Look, I've got to do it my way. Oh, really? Well, your way isn't right. Supposing I talk to the prince about it. Let's pick it up. I'll never smile again until I smile at you. I'll never laugh again. What good would it do? You need a referee? I'm uh, doing an article for a magazine all about the prince. Come back, all that jazz. I'd like to ask a few questions. I understand you're the prince's latest discovery. That's right. Well, you must be pretty grateful. I mean, you're a very lucky girl. Well, sure, I'm grateful. But it's strictly business. Any new offers? I mean, maybe you'd like to break the contract for a better deal. No, thanks, mister. You can quote me. Uh... Well, uh, then, how about you? I heard you hit the skids when the big bands went out. Well, I, uh, I took a drink once in a while, if that's what you mean, yeah. Uh, so you're making a comeback along with the Prince, then? Well, that's about it, yeah. I, uh, I did the Beaver song for him, you know, and uh, now he wants me to do all his stuff. Tell me something. Does uh, the Prince ever orchestrate his own stuff? <laughs> well, sometimes, but uh, he's not the greatest. Uh, now, look, Mr. Uh, Mr. Carter. Well, Mr. Staccato, I've got a lot of work to do. So if, uh, if you don't mind. Well, it... I'll see you again. The fourth name on the list of suspects was the business manager, Malcolm Simpson. I couldn't find Malcolm in his office, and about nine, I gave up trying to reach him. I went to Waldo's. Yeah, Prince. Johnny boy. <laughs> that list I gave you, you check on them four cats? Yeah, I checked on three of them. I'll try the fourth tomorrow. Now, look, Johnny, you just stay with it, will you? I want you to check on all four of them again tonight. I want you to find out which one of those cats dropped the poison. First in my grapefruit and then in my wine, Johnny. My best wine. Wine? Prince, are you okay? <laughs> I'm on a new kick. <laughs> I'm far out, man. Man, I'm really gone. The man who had written a great piece and called it life would never hear it played. The prince was dead. I called the police and told them everything I knew. Then I went looking for Malcolm Simpson. I still had an obligation to the prince. Malcolm Simpson. The fourth name on the list the prince had given me. This was his business manager. I only had one question. Was he at the prince's apartment that day? He said, yes, he was. Sergeant Jack Thomas came in to take Simpson down for questioning. He already picked up the others. What about the wife? We let her go. Maybe we'll ask her some more questions in the morning. Thanks, Jack. I went to Rosemary's apartment. She was out. Then I went to the prince's apartment. She was there. When I say I'm not sweetness and light, I'm not sweetness and light. I hated his guts. Don't do this to yourself, Rosemary. I've been standing here for half an hour trying to think of one nice thing about that guy. One nice thing. He'd tell me he was going out for a pack of cigarettes. Then I wouldn't see him for a week. Not so much as a kind word or a phony smile. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, it wasn't just me. It was everybody. He wouldn't pay a bill unless somebody held a gun against his head. He'd lie to his friends. He'd rob them blind. He just... He didn't believe in anything, not even himself. But he was great. Oh, he was a great con man, not a great artist or a musician. He wrote the score to life. He didn't write life. He said he did. He was a liar. 
Take it easy now, He didn't baby. write it. He just said that to make an impression. Look, his name's not even on it. And he'd always scrawl his name big across the top of anything he'd write. And he wrote junk. He was no musician, no man, no nothing. Apartment hunting? I just left the police station. Jerry's still down there. You lost your way home, Kitty. This ain't it. Look, there was nothing between the prince and I. Out! Why lie to you? I came here to get my coat. What coat? The mink that Prince gave me. I left it here. Everything of his belongs to me. That means everything in this apartment. Not my coat. That means your coat. Look, sister, I don't want to start anything, but you know why? Because he loved me. Fifteen years. Fifteen years I had him, and fifteen years he had me. He had lots of girl singers, but he only had one wife. I was his ninth girl singer. But I was his first and last wife. What? Sergeant Jack Thomas, please. Jack? Staccato. I'm with Lester Prince's widow. You still have Jerry Lindstrom down there? Good, because I think he's the killer. Bring him over to, to the Prince's apartment right away, will you? Oh, not here, Johnny, not here. Uh, Jack, make it Waldo's in 20 minutes. Yes, Jack, I've got the motive. I've got the motive. Just bring him down. All right, okay, buddy, bye. Are you all right? I'm so sorry. If at this hour a drunk should wander in. No drunk, Waldo. Just Detective Sergeant Jack Thomas and a killer. A killer? You're entertaining killers in my place? Have a chair, Waldo. I don't want the chair. Just keep going. Oh, Jerry. What gives here? I thought you wrote for a magazine. No, I like to play good music like this. It's real pretty. Listen to this. Nice? It's real nice. I never figured the prince had this kind of music in him. You like Jerry? I like. A man who can write like this must have quite a soul, yeah. A man writes a piece like this once in a lifetime. It can take him a whole life to write it. A life filled with ups and downs, the good and the bad. That's what the prince called this piece. He called it life. It is life. Yeah. A man's life set down on paper, and what's here lives on. It'll be played. And people will recognize the prince for what he really was. A genius. A phony. You know, don't you? Yeah. The way you play with feeling, you must know. I know. I poured my life into this piece. 
Then I took it to the prince and he said, great, wonderful. My next record. And then he said, it might sell better if I put my name on it. His name. He wanted to put his name on my life. And I said no and he just laughed and laughed and said, could I prove, could I prove that I wrote it, that I have it registered? He just laughed and I walked out. Like a lamb, I just walked away. What could I do? He had his name on it. Who'd believe an ex-drunk who had, hadn't, hadn't worked in years? What would you have done? I don't know. I would have belted him, cursed him. Uh, I would have yelled bloody murder, but I wouldn't have killed him. Let's go. Will I die for this? I don't know. I don't know. Look, uh, what you said about the piece, it'll be played. For a long time, it'll be played. You'll play it now and then, won't you? Yeah, I'll play it now and then. All right, let's go. that writes music like that turns out to be a murderer. It's a funny world. Yeah. It's life. Mm -hmm.